Welcome back to How to Be a Better DM, the official podcast of Monsters.Rent. I'm Justin Lewis. And I'm Tanner Wayland. And we are here to help you tell better stories for yourself and your players as you dungeon master sessions of D&D, Dungeons and Dragons. We'd like to give you some quick announcements. We actually have one before the show. And then after the show, if you want to stick around, we have some more announcements then as well. Uh, but first, let's talk about this. Tired of being alone? Are you tired of not having any of your players understand you? Are you tired of never truly belonging? Well, you're in luck. All you need to do is join the Guild. The Guild is a unique and exclusive experience that is only open to Dungeon Masters. It is a full community focused on helping ease your DMing burdens. Want to meet other DMs? Join the Guild. Want to discuss your homebrew ideas with people who would appreciate it instead of just telling your cat? Join the guild! Want to find a place where all your wildest dreams will come true? Join the guild! Go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free. Wait, that can't be right. Chuck, Chuck, can you check this again? Is this supposed to be... What? Oh, it's... They're serious? It's free? Oh. Okay, all right. Yes, go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free, even though they are crazy for giving this away for free. Common side effects may include burping, sneezing, laughing, breathing, hearing, listening, tasting, farting, critting, sarcasm, and in extreme cases, explosive diarrhea. Awesome. With that out of the way, we can get into today's show. You all finish your long rest and you wake up to a bright, if not bitter, cold winter morning. The view from the mountaintop lookout on which you slept is breathtaking, as is the chilling wind that blows across. You all slept comfortably thanks to the warmth of the fire. As you all wake up, you prepare for the day, memorizing your spells, stretching your sore limbs, and generally preparing yourselves for whatever may come next, except one of you. Rowan, the druid, as you wake up, you are met with the sight of a small brown squirrel, sitting before you, patiently waiting for you to awaken. Tied around the squirrel's neck is a tiny scroll of parchment. Naturally, you reach down and untie the scroll and unroll it. As you do, the squirrel scampers off into the trees. The scroll is very small, yet is crammed with writing. The writing is clumsy, as if it was written with charcoal rather than a quill and ink. On the parchment is a line of text that turns your heart to ice. Help. Captured by Zixix in Waterdeep. Cynthia. And that is where we will end today's session. Welcome back to the 29th episode of How to Be a Better DM. I'm your host, Justin Lewis, and I'm here to help you craft better stories for yourselves and your players as you DM Dungeons & Dragons 5e. Before we get to today's show, let's go through a couple of announcements first. I hope you all enjoyed our last episode where you all met our new team member, Tanner Wayland. If you have any comments or questions for him or me, send us a direct message at Geronimo Levis through Instagram. And uh, I'd love to hear what you thought about the episode and how, how you like having Tanner on the team. You'll probably be hearing uh, from another team member in the coming weeks, so get excited for that. Next, today's show is brought to you by our monthly newsletter. You can sign up for that using the link in the show notes and actually get access to extra tips on being a DM, behind the scenes content, and actually extra homebrew pieces that you can use in your campaigns. And you can also sign up to play a one shot with myself as your DM for free. And this is first, first come first serve. So sign up for the newsletter and let's play a session together. Now let's get to the show. Planning your sessions can often be the most difficult part of playing D&D, aside from getting people to show up. Sometimes, though, it helps to have a general structure to your sessions. So, let's look at this simple D&D structure that I've come up with. It's kind of a framework for how to think about going about preparing for your sessions. Number one, what happened last time? One of the most important things you can do to start off a good session is a recap of the session before. This gives your players a chance to get into character and into the game. It also serves as a nice way to transition out of friendly table chatter and into playing a game where you have to be quiet while the DM talks or else. Lastly, it's a great way to remind your players what happened last because 
they've probably forgotten. And it's always nice to have a quick, gentle reminder. Number two, resolve what happened last time. Finish what you started last time. If you had just started a combat encounter or were about to roll initiative, then run the encounter. If you left off on a cliffhanger, then run through what implied or what was implied by the cliffhanger. Sometimes, though, it makes for a nice twist to not resolve what you started, but that's an advanced technique that maybe you can try in the future. At this point, though, if you're still new, just just try finishing up what you started. So if you're in a dungeon, get the people out of the, the dungeon. Or if you are traveling to a city, get the people to the city. Unless your plot calls for something else. Number three, ask about characters' backstories. At this point, ask if every person's backstory has been featured lately. If not, add in something that relates to the backstory for someone. It doesn't need to be in-depth, but it can be. Uh, for example, in my campaign, one of my characters hasn't really been, uh, hasn't had their backstory featured, so I gave them a little cameo, you could say. I, I, I've been previously giving them tomes of knowledge. And as he was reading one of these tomes, he saw kind of a shadow on the corner of his eye, and then when he looked at it, it was gone. And this was just a simple way for him to be like, oh, something's going on with my backstory, or something's going on with me, with what I have going on, and the DM hasn't forgotten me. Number four, add the next main plot point. Think about the next logical plot point and prepare that. Pretty simple. Literally, don't think of any twists. Just think what should happen next. Uh, just be aware, though, that you will not be able to plan for everything. I like to ask myself the question of what would I logically do next? So I prepare that. And then I ask, if I didn't do that, what would I logically do? Then I prepare that. And then in the session, we end up doing something completely different because players like to come up with things in the moment and derail everything we planned as a DM, but c'est la vie. Number five, prepare at least one encounter, one combat encounter. Most often, your players expect to fight something. So I find it helpful to have at least one combat encounter in my back pocket. The best way to do this is using D&D Beyond's Encounter Builder. Uh, I find it as a great way to save an encounter and then go in and tweak it a bit. When things have changed in session, but you still need an encounter, you can kind of tweak it up really quickly. Number six, plan for the cliffhanger. The last thing you want to do is plan for a probable, probable, keyword probable, cliffhanger. I say probable because there is no way of knowing exactly where the session will end, but you'll have a lot of input. And so will the players. So it's, it's good to think about it, but be flexible. For me, good cliffhangers are right before either big en encounters or right after a reveal of something. Or when there's a twist. And you'll want to be thinking about your cliffhanger during the session even. So that way you can prepare for it and possibly even change it. Uh, the, the cliffhanger you heard at the beginning of today's episode was one that I featured in my campaign recently. And I prepared it and it was another simple way to not, not really pull in the backstory of a character, but kind of allude to someone who was playing with our group but decided not to play anymore. Uh, one thing you do need to know is that not every session needs a cliffhanger. Sometimes you should just end the, or end the, end the session at a decent period or, or when everyone's tired. But planning for a cliffhanger allows you to slip one in when the moment is perfect. So there you go, a simple session structure that should help you figure out what your players will probably be doing next session unless they don't do any of it. Number one, what happened last time? Recap everything. Number two, resolve what happened last time. Number three, ask about your characters' backstories and feature one of them if it's appropriate. Number four, add the next main plot point. You don't have to be tricksy, you can just make it logical. Number five, prepare at least one encounter. Number six, plan for the cliffhanger. So was this helpful? If so, I would love to hear a rating and review on the show so that others can bask in the glory of Dungeons and Dragons. I'd also love to know what you think about the show. So send me any comments or questions or even a direct message through Instagram at Geronimo Levis and I will be sure to respond. I love talking to people about Dungeons and Dragons. That's probably why I started a podcast on it. And don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter to get even more D&D secrets and shortcuts, as well as the opportunity to play a free one-shot with me as your DM. Uh, please do that. I am so lonely in the DM worlds. I only have one group. <laughs> uh, but come back next week for another amazing episode by 
one of our new team members who will introduce himself next week. But until then, my friends, my players, my characters, my dungeon masters, let's go ahead and roll initiative. Thank you for listening to today's show. Uh, we really appreciate your support and your patronage. We have a few more announcements to go over. Uh, first, did you ever fall in love with the library as a kid? It was a place where you could experience a thousand stories without having to buy a thousand books. That is what Monsters at Rent can do for your D&D campaign. You can rent and swap out as many quality miniature monsters and creatures for your D&D party as you could ever want without having to buy them. You can rescue villagers from a kobold camp or lead your party through the fighting forest or many more adventures. We're coming out with new bundles all the time. Just sign up for our subscription to get access to your own personal library of minis. Go to monsters.rent to find out more. That's the website, monsters, with an S, dot rent. Get your library pass to a world of minis today. We also wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Stardust and Dragons. I'm going to let one of the cast of Stardust and Dragons, Christian Hatcher, and his crew tell you a little bit more about it. This August, a new adventure podcast is coming to a platform near you, filled with action. You one of the two of them. We can't hey. keep taking hits like that. Drama. Everything that she's been doing, everything she's going to do, finally sets in. And Stardust. Help! Help! <coughs> Someone, please! Find out more about this epic odyssey at stardustanddragons.com, where adventure awaits in the stars. That's all the announcements we have today. Again, thank you so much for everything you do for us. You make this show possible. Like we said before, we'll be back next week with another great episode. And until then, let's go ahead and roll initiative.